What goes up? Boy, Marie! Boy, Marie! No, did it? I buy strictly American. <laughs> Time now for spinning my dad's vinyl. He, with all his skips, scratches, and pops, is my dad, Frank Baccarello. Thanks, sweetie. And thank you for tuning in to episode 195 of Spinning My Dad's Vinyl. This is truly an interesting find in my dad's collection. We know by now my dad's love for the Dixieland style of music. So it's not surprising I found this record in the stacks. But what was surprising is that this recording was made by seven musicians that had never played together before. You most certainly can tell. And they're not exactly household names. So, get ready to hear what it must have sounded like rolling down the Mississippi River in the late 19th and early 20th centuries in volume 195, Delta Dixieland. There are the Delta Kings with Old Man River, written by Jerome Kern and Oscar Hammerstein II. 
Okay, why this record for this episode? Oh, what can I say? My dad loved his Dixieland music, and I think I might have inherited that love just a bit. Dixieland is the perfect example of what our house sounded like. Happy-go-lucky people listening to happy-go-lucky music. And if you know anything about this music, it's really several musicians having their own kind of fun within the family or band structure that makes it one cohesive tune. Maybe that just might describe my sibs and my parents to a T. Each of us going off doing our own thing, but still remaining a close family unit. And several of the rivers mentioned in the titles of these songs have a personal connection, like this one. There's a river I have spent some time on. Back when I was in Boy Scouts, we used to paddle that river in canoes between the scout camp and Blennerhassett Island, often playing in the waves of the barges that were going up and down the beautiful Ohio. Written by Ballard McDonald and Robert King and first released in 1919. Okay, let me tell you about my dad's vinyl I am spinning for this episode. The Delta Kings, down the river with the Delta Kings. On the Down South Records label, number DS201, it's a vinyl LP format, released in 1958. Its genre is jazz blues, and its style is 
Dixieland. It was recorded October 13, 1958 at the National Radio Recording Company in New Orleans, Louisiana. The sound engineer was Jack Yates using Ampex tape with RCA 77D and Stevens microphones. I love that techie stuff too. Editing and mastering was performed by Bill Halford at the ACA Studios in Houston, Texas. And we will hear six of the ten songs on this album. Now the liner notes are kind of long, so I have a few I have picked out for you. Down the River is an unusual recording of authentic old-style Dixieland. The kind of music that was at its peak when the riverboats were steaming up and down the Mississippi. The kind of music you can hardly find nowadays. The riverboats, like the music, have practically disappeared from the American scene. Only one grand lady remains to regularly plow her way down the river to New Orleans, the Delta Queen. Not too long ago, as she left her home port of Cincinnati, Ohio, and steamed up the river to St. Paul, Minnesota to pick up a few more passengers, a young man with a banjo was rushing up to meet her from Houston, Texas. Russ Waite and his banjo boarded the Delta Queen at St. Paul, joining 200 other people for a leisurely trip down the river. His banjo stayed in its case for a few days until he was requested to play one night for a lot of people who were hungry to hear old-style riverboat jazz. Russ obliged them every evening for the remainder of his trip, and when he debarked, he was resolved to go ahead with an idea for producing a true seven-piece Dixieland record. The seven men named themselves the Delta Kings and embarked on a strenuous two-afternoon rehearsal session in New Orleans, which ended the third day in a five-hour recording session. The perfection which they achieved on this record is nothing short of amazing, as this is not a steady professional band. None of the musicians had ever played a job together, nor had most of them ever met before. There were no written arrangements, and such arranging, as is evident, was the result of suggestions by the musicians themselves at at the two rehearsals. Each man played what he felt. To make sure that nothing about this record would be changed, deleted, speeded up, or in any way commercialized, Russ has produced and released Down the River under his own label. What you hear is an exact reproduction of what was played as recorded on the first and only take, full of improvisations and individuality, and occasionally a bug. That was written by Beverly Grace Inlow. Okay, let's see what prices this record is being sold at on Discogs.com. Actually, it's only been sold twice there. $5.56 for a high and a $3.99 low, which gives it a $4.77 average and median. It was last sold on that site on April 6, 2021, for that $3.99 low. Now, as I was checking the internet for eBay prices, I realized that not only was my dad's release showing up, but this album was released twice in the U.S. and once in Canada under the Cap record label and with a more colorful cover. Uh, It was released in the U.K. under London record labels, and all they did was put a narrow gray frame around the same cover my dad has. London also released a version in South Africa that had an artist's rendition of the riverboat known as the Delta Queen. Amazon didn't have a copy for sale. Now, my dad's record is in fair condition considering it is 66 years old. There's not too much popping to be heard even though I can see it in the waveform of the digitized recording. This is surprising since the surface has plenty of scuff marks and a couple of scratches. Uh, The cover is in poor condition. First, I think the cover photo featuring an odd angle of the Delta Queen is a little blurry anyway. It was provided by Green Line Steamers Incorporated of Cincinnati, Ohio, who of course owned that ship at the time this was recorded in 1958. The edges are in terrible shape. In fact, it's a wonder my dad's black electrical tape isn't holding it together. There's an oddly placed green magic marker streak, unlike the thick ones on other albums. He also does not have his infamous address label on the front. So I will value my dad's vinyl at 75 cents. Next up, I love how they use both down and up in the same song title. (laughs) 
Down Upon the Swanee River, first known as and first recorded as Old Folks at Home, written by Stephen Foster. Okay, let me introduce you to the Delta Kings, the aforementioned Russ Waite Jr. on banjo, Len Mano on bass, Bill Bourgeois on clarinet, Bill Smiley on drums, Jerry Asbell on piano, Armin Kay on trumpet, and the other mastermind behind the album was, on trombone, Bill Craze III. Now, the liner notes say this about him. Bill Craze, a New Orleans attorney who was one of the finest trombonists in all the Southland, and likewise, an incurable true Dixieland addict. And now, a song about another riverboat. <laughs>
Waiting for the Robert E. Lee. Written by L. Wolf Gilbert and Louis F. Muir and first performed by Al Jolson in 1912. Time now for this episode's interesting side note. And it has to do with the history of the Delta Queen. The Delta Queen is an American sternwheel steamboat. She is known for cruising the major rivers that constitute the tributaries of the Mississippi River, particularly in the American South, although she began service in California on the Sacramento River Delta, for which she gets her name. Here are some highlights of her history. The Delta Queen recreated historic steamboat races each year during the Kentucky Derby Festival when she raced with the Belle of Louisville on the Ohio at Louisville in the Great Steamboat Race. At the end of the 2008 river cruising season, Delta Queen ceased all service. On her official website, the Majestic American Line announced it is ending all operations, would not operate in 2009, and that its assets, including all its river boats, were for sale. On February 11, 2009, Delta Queen arrived in Chattanooga, Tennessee to become a floating boutique hotel. Under lease to Chattanooga businessman Harry Phillips, she was docked at Coolidge Park Landing on Chattanooga's North Shore. The Delta Queen Hotel officially opened for overnight overnight guests on June 5, 2009, offering dining, a lounge, live period music, and theatrical performances, closing to the public in December 2014. The Delta Queen was then bought by the newly formed Delta Queen Steamboat Company in early 2015. It departed Chattanooga for restoration in New Orleans on March 22, 2015, for repairs and upgrades in Halma, Louisiana. She safely arrived on April 7, 2015, in her temporary slip for restoration. As of January 3, 2024, she is still docked at Halma, Louisiana, with no evidence of work being done. How sad. Okay, next up. How could we not have a Hoagie Carmichael song when featuring music from this era?
That Lazy River, written by Hoagie Carmichael and Sidney Aroden. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. There's no getting around it. Dixieland, and a little of the ragtime you heard as well, always reminds me of my father. And if you've been a follower of this show, you know how true that is. Plus, I appreciated what we learned in the liner notes about this group never having played together before. But it just goes to show you how easy it is for many different kinds of musicians to get together, do their own thing, and still produce some great Dixieland music. And I know I'll be giving this episode a spin often. And last up, a song I played every football game and parade in the marching band because I went to a high school kind of nestled up against a river. song first known as I Ain't Gonna Study War No More. It is now Down By the Riverside, and it is a traditional song that was first recorded in 1920. And there you have selections from a recording trying to rekindle the days when you heard music on those special paddle wheel boats slowly cruising the major rivers of this country. So thanks for tuning into Volume 195, Delta Dixieland, however you did. 
If you want more information about this show, head over to spinningmydadsvinyl.com. I'll be back next week with all my skips, scratches, and pops for volume 196, Pavarotti for Pauline. Until then, go with the flow, my friend.